Alright, what's up everybody? Back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys have a good one. Today we're going to be talking about the draft lottery. It happened yesterday. Very, very entertaining. And we're just going to be talking about it. You know, my reaction to all of the picks. Well, not picks, but where teams stand. What I think they can do with each pick. Stuff like that. Thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you like the content around here, consider subscribing like turn notifications do all the stuff like that i really appreciate it it really helps out a lot and yeah let's not waste any more of your time let's get right into it so here's the order of the 2023 nba draft the san antonio spurs ended up with the number one overall pick for the third time in franchise history charlotte number two the trailblazers are number three the houston rockets are four the detroit pistons the worst team in the league number five pick in the draft sucks for them and then the rest of the draft went how it was supposed to go Orlando 6, Indiana 7, Washington 8, Utah 9, Dallas keeps their pick at number 10, 11, that pick goes to Orlando, it's really Chicago's pick because of the Nick Lucevich trade, goes to Orlando, then OKC 12, Toronto 13, New Orleans at 14, that's the lottery. And so yeah, let's go through every pick and talk about the team and where I, what I think they can do with it. So obviously number 1, the Spurs, they're picking, they're picking Victor Webanyama, I mean, it's just perfect sense. It's funny because I feel like I've actually never been talking about this. And honestly, when you think about it, like, it had to be the Spurs for Vic. I mean, it's the perfect fit. They're the only team that doesn't really have, like, a face of the franchise type of guy. Or, well, a guy that can be a face of the franchise type piece. They're the only team that doesn't really have that. So it made sense. The Spurs have always had a great big man. They've always had a great organization. There's no drama. There's no craziness going on. Greg Popovich is still there. I mean, I, th I think it was just the perfect situation for Victor go in. And now the Spurs get lucky again, man. <laughs> they got David Robinson in 87. They got Tim Duncan in 97. And in 23, Victor Webanyama. Just a perfect scenario for them. And I'm very, very excited to see Rick in San Antonio, what happens there. But now after that, the draft gets very interesting because of how it played out. The Charlotte Hornets... Get the number two pick in the draft. So close to getting Vic. Lamelo and Vic would have been crazy as a duo. But now the Hornets are in a very interesting spot. Where they have a choice between Scoot Henderson, who is probably the consensus number two guy in this draft, and Brandon Miller from Alabama. They have both those choices. And I think they're going to take a while. They should take a while for that choice. Because you do have Lamelo Ball there, of course, as a point guard that needs the ball and stuff. But... You also have Scoo Henderson, and I feel like the Hornets are in a position where they just need the best talent they can have. So I think Scoo Henderson is obviously probably the better talent than Brandon Miller. Of course, people are like, oh, you already have LaMelo. You have two point guards and stuff. You have to choose between them. But honestly, I feel like LaMelo Ball is going to be good. If Scoo Henderson does get drafted to Charlotte, LaMelo off the ball isn't really a bad thing. You know, LaMelo's been a lot... Played a lot of time off the ball. I feel like especially his rookie year, he came off the bench. It was kind of the sixth man. Lamelo can play off the ball and catch his shoe and make second and be a secondary guy. You know, because he has the three point shooting and all that stuff. Scoot Henderson isn't there yet, shooting wise and stuff. But I don't know. I just feel like a a backcourt of Lamelo and Scoot would be very fun to watch. It would bring fans to Charlotte, and it could be very explosive and dynamic. You know. But then you also have Brandon Miller is a really, really good option as well. Kind of like a forward. The Hornets forwards aren't really that great. Kelly Oubre is going to be a free agent. Gordon Hayward probably shouldn't be on the team any longer. P.J. Washington is a restricted free agent. We don't know if they're going to pay him money. Miles Bridges probably will be back next year, but he's going to have to face a, a suspension before he comes back. And he hasn't played basketball in a year, so who knows what he's like, conditional, conditioning and stuff like that. I think their forwards are kind of an open spot, so maybe it got, having a guy like Brandon Miller, that they can have a sharpshooter, but also get his own, would be very nice in Charlotte. So I think the Hornets have a very interesting decision to make between Scoot and Brandon Miller, and that decision also leads to get interesting at number three because the Blazers jumped into the top four and got the number three overall pick. They missed the number one pick by, I think, one ball. One lottery ball changed them from getting Vic. That would have been crazy. But now Portland's in a very interesting position as well because depending on what Charlotte does, let's say Charlotte does draft Scoot Henderson, 
then Portland gets a Brandon Miller. Portland gets Brandon Miller. And you have Dame, Simons, Miller, Sharp. Miller probably can play the four. Maybe you got Jeremy Grant. You got a lot of different options there. Or let's say Charlotte drafts Brandon Miller. What do the Blazers do? Do they draft Scoot Henderson? When you already have Damian Lillard and Anthony Simons and Shane Sharp, who's kind of like a guard forward. And what do you do there? Do you draft Scoot and trade Dame? Do you draft Scoot and try to maybe trade Simons? I don't know. Or do you pass on Scoot Henderson and maybe take one of the, well, I was going to say one of the Thompson twins, but they already have so many guards. Maybe like Joris Walker or Cam Whitmore. Potentially at number three. And then Scoot falls down to the fourth pick. Or do they just get rid of it in general and trade n- number three? Because, of course, there's going to be a lot of reports that came out yesterday. Blazers saying they're going to look at the market for the number three overall pick. Because, of course, they're still going to try to build around Damian Lillard. So trading the number th- three pick, they can get some value back for it. And a lot of teams... Would probably would want number three, obviously because you can get Brandon Miller, or there's the potential of getting Scoot Henderson at number three, depending on what Charlotte does. Especially if Charlotte does take Brandon Miller too, then the phones probably might be blowing up for Portland at number three. But I was thinking last night, like what teams that would want Scoot Henderson have the assets that Portland would like to get? Because the number three pick, I don't want, just want a couple bench players. My number three pick, I want a good player. I think maybe the Raptors could be in position, especially if Fred Van Vliet is coming back and they're going for more of a rebuild type guy. They have the 13th pick, so Portland can still get a solid young player. And maybe Pascal for number three, or OG for number three. Uh, if I'm Portland, probably thinking about it. Pascal, Siakam for the number three overall pick. Does Toronto do that? Or does Portland do that? No, 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 very interesting. But that's the only really, really like, kind of realistic team I would think would maybe trade up for number three. A team that's maybe going into a rebuild that would want the high pick, that would want the Scoot Henderson type of player, but also has the assets for Portland to get. Like, that's the only really team I can think of. Um, Brooklyn, Mikael Bridges? I, I don't know. Mikael Bridges? For number three, I don't know if Brooklyn's trying to trade Mikael Bridges. The Cl- I don't know if the Clippers are rebuilding or anything. I, I, it's very tough. It's very tough. We gotta wait to see what happens. Obviously. So yeah, that dude number three is very very interesting in this draft because there's a lot of different things that can happen. Houston dropping to four kind of sucks. It isn't the worst thing because now there is the potential that School Henderson drops to four if Charlotte takes. Brandon Miller and Portland can't find a trade partner and doesn't want to take school and they take like Cam Whitmore and then Houston if Houston ends up with school Henderson at four that's like a that's a steal that is a steal for the Rockets if school Henderson drops to four and they can pick him up like that would be actually insane but if not uh, maybe a men Thompson I've seen as the guy that could potentially be there for Houston maybe do they take a chance on Cam Whitmore potentially at number four and that forward, small forward spot, I don't know. And then Detroit falling to five, man. That really, that that stings. Because I honestly thought Detroit maybe could get like the two or three pick and get Brandon Miller. I think that would have been a great, great option. But now Detroit, they fall to five. Of course, they could still get some solid plays. They could still get maybe a Jarese Walker. I think it would be very good for them. They could still get a Cam Whitmore. I think Jarese Walker would be great in Detroit. That would be a really good fit for them. Um, but yeah, it really sucks. Detroit, they won 17 games this year, and they get rewarded with the fifth pick, man. That, that that really stings for Detroit. And then going down the list is kind of what we expected. Um, Orlando, I'm really interested to see what they do. Would they have the sixth pick and the 11th pick in the draft? They could potentially get two more rookies to add already to that really nice young core. That would be great. Or maybe do they package them together and trade for something? I don't know. That's probably a lot likely. I'm just throwing this stuff out there. Um, I'm very interested to see what happens with this, these picks. Dallas keeps their pick at number 10, which is big for them. A lot of people thought Dallas was going to jump up, um, but they didn't jump up. They stayed at number 10. Now they can get a young player, a solid young player in there that can help out Luka and potentially Kyrie if he does stay and whatever else happens. 
managed to see that. Oklahoma City gets another lottery pick at number 12. So, OKC probably getting another steal in there. Washington, number 8. I don't know what Washington's going to get at number 8. They can get us something solid, but... Yeah, Washington's just always in this place of just being average. You know, I did a look-in episode on it. By the way, I did the look-in episode on the Spurs, and I actually talked about, like, I think Victor Wembanyama, like, this is the perfect fit for the Spurs, and the Spurs are in for a great rebuild. That's actually my most viewed video. It's at, like, 2.7K now, which is insane, because it's been at 2.1, like, the entire time, and all of a sudden, the last, like, week, or so it's been jumping and jumping and jumping. It still is jumping. Thank you guys for that. appreciate it. But yeah, that's funny, because I, I feel like I kind of spoke into existence. And then also I did yesterday a short on the draft lottery. I predicted the draft lottery. and went to Tankathon, and the Spurs got the number one overall pick in that Tankathon. And I was like, well, that's going to happen. And it did happen. I don't know. It just felt like the obvious thing that could happen. Vic to San Antonio. It just felt obvious. But yeah, I'm very excited for this draft. Um, As the draft time comes to it, I'm going to be doing a mock draft. Probably right before the draft. You know, I'm not a big mock draft guy. I still have to do, I feel like, a lot of work on some prospects. So don't expect a mock draft for until, like, right before the draft. I'm not a dude that's just going to put out seven mock drafts or anything. So, but, yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you do like the content, again, consider subscribing. Like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I really appreciate it. It really helps out a lot. And, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow.